gives us today the possibility to incorporate this into, into the whole brand. And today we will show how that transfers into reality. And if it comes to the future, we are already on our way. We are leading the change in technology and as well in customer needs. Latest proof, the Ionic, our Nexo, and of course our Kona Electric. Clear statements for our clear commitment to electromobility. That's perfectly right, Andreas. With all of these electrified models, we are offering the broadest range of electrified powertrains in the industry. And from mild hybrids up to fuel cell, we have to go beyond using our technology for producing cars. Take our fuel cell technology. This can be implemented as a future energy service in healthcare as well as in holistic mobility concepts. And on top of that, real progress is key for us to meet the changing needs of our customers globally. Right. Thomas, you can already see the impact in design today. We want to provide more mobility all over the globe. We create cars that match the needs and, and taste of all customers. Electrification allows us to take advantage of increased space. We combine a sleek, elegant exterior design with state-of-the-art technologies. That's a very good point, Luc, and I can say in 2020, this will be our year of electrification. We will supply around 80,000, 80,000 vehicles in Europe with zero emission. We are still the only manufacturer at this stage to offer a fully electrified SUV lineup. And end of 2020, more than 75% of our cars in Europe will be completely electrified. So that's uh, some big statements for Europe, Andreas. Uh, Thomas, on a global scale? Well, Hyundai Motor Group is expanding its lineup to 44 electrified vehicles. This is a very massive increase. By 2025, we are going to invest almost 50 billion euros for research and development of future technologies. We want to offer the most of our new models with EV drivetrains by 2030 in major markets. And five years later, by 2035, also in emerging markets. Sales of more than 670,000 batteries and fuel cell electric vehicles are planned annually by 2025. This will position us among the top three EV providers globally. And I can tell you that uh, bringing electrification is not only for the future, but as well, if you're looking into the introduction of our new i20, we electrify this car as well. So we will have the first time a mild hybrid powertrain. And the new all new i20 is a really important car for us because it's the first car that incorporates so new design philosophy, sensual sportiness. Maybe you can explain a little bit, Luke, in your words, sensual sportiness. What does it mean? And maybe especially what will it mean when we look at this car later? I'm going to try to make a long story short, but it's a result of four years of work where when I started, we noticed that we needed to make a big jump. And um, it, it incorporates different parameters. Already the word sensuous integrates the values of more, emotional, or more emotionality in our designs. Sportiness implies dynamics, implies also to be reactive to what's happening around us. Um, and then it has other side effects. For instance, we have such a diversity of vehicles all over the world that we want to tailor cars for all specific needs, markets and, and customers implies that we have got rid of the family look. We have the typical Hyundai look which, which we really address the, the, to, the cars to the personality of our buyers. And then also it implies the whole new process of um, digitalizing the whole uh, creation of the vehicles, to be faster on the market, to be more reactive. So the sensual sportiness is not about a formal language philosophy. It's about a new concept in the creation of our cars. Sounds great. So you're really making cars our customers can be proud to drive. And don't forget about fun to drive, guys. That's why motorsport is key to our electrification strategy. Electric racing will become one of the core pillars of Hyundai Motorsport strategy. Yeah, there's more to come, hopefully. Sure. This year, we will compete in the ETCR with our first ever electric touring car, the Veloster N ETCR. We are joining forces with small, innovative companies like Arrival and Remark. 
These partners are incubators, so to speak, speedboats for new ideas. With Remark, for example, we are looking into high-performance battery solutions and powertrains that are both modular and scalable. Both partnerships will bring our competitiveness to the next level. By the way, the next hot thing from Hyundai and Remark will be shown at the New York Auto Show. Can't wait to see that. And as a designer, Luke, I guess you can't wait to get your hands on these platforms. Absolutely. The modularity of our new EV platforms give us much more freedom to create revolutionary design concepts. Um, our latest concept right behind us demonstrates that well. Right, and this is what we all want to see. So what have you got for us? Just let me say one more thing before we show it to you. We believe in a vision called optimistic futurism and a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde character. The aim being to contrast nature and technology, emotion and practicality, analog and digital worlds to create that tension. That said, this is prophecy. Look, I have to admit, you guys from design have been doing a stunning job, really. Congrats. But it's quite different from what we know from Hyundai until now, I believe. That was what we were looking, something that would inspire us uh, for the next class to come. Yeah. You know, just not just a firework, but just something that would have a long-lasting influence on, on, on future projects. And it's also different from what you see on the road today, because simply what happened in the last years is, since the 70s, we have been influenced by the Latin way of constructing cars, which is the autographic design. So the side view, the front view, the top view. And so here we went back to the 20s and the 30s, where cars were sculptural, they were streamlined, and they were more emotional. It's almost like what we saw about the, the times where fu the future was optimistic and people were, were not afraid of the future. So this is trying to incorporate those values into the, 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 the shape. And also the uh, LED architecture looks very, very interesting. We needed a contrast. We're talking about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And this is about the contrast between those sleek forms and this, this construction game there, which brings again, um, you know, the opposite, the antagonism, which is really necessary in design. So look, congratulations to a stunning design, I guess. A couple of guys behind, right? Yes. Um, thank you for, for your nice words. There is a lot of people behind them. There is uh, what I call my dream team is uh, in the last four years, they became a winning team. And this is only possible with all the hard work they've been doing. So I think let's hear from them now. Sensuous sportiness. It's the logical and emotional connection. Technologies and art. Perfect balance between the functionality and aesthetic. A good design should strike at the first moment you look at it. We look at everything that's going on, whether it's fashion industry or mobility industry. One image is the black pebble on the beach. Natural elements. The changing times. By rethinking, you challenge yourself. But without challenge, design is not that fun. Sustainability is no longer optional. This is a responsibility of the designer. We actually came up with the idea with kind of like a joystick. I would say this is the most striking feature of this interior. It frees up the space. This had an impact on the whole design. Well, part of the joy I get is getting into trouble. But we're here to push and push and push. The bubble shape, like a spaceship, gives you a feeling that the future could be bright and delightful. If we can create a product where people smile and see an optimistic future, that's what our goal is. The real progress in design is to be honest. We want to create optimism again. It has to be the blueprint of the Hyundai design in the future. 
the real voice for the future. Do it and believe it. It looks stunning. Absolutely. Well, that's a first great reaction, but now let's get inside and look at all the amazing details. Rays. Wow, what is that? Isn't it cool? Absolutely. Absolutely. Going from the relaxed mode to a driving mode, um, but keeping all the, 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 the space you need um, that, that you have already on the floor pan, and you also have it on the, on the dashboard. Absolutely amazing, but look, please don't get me wrong, but where's the steering wheel? <laughs> well, the same concept of trying to liberate the space that we get from the electric platform came into the ergonomic uh, interface with the driver. So we worked with the AWTH of Aachen on creating a digital communication. And um, by using the joysticks, you have a more precise interface with the driver, but at the same time, we don't have the steering wheel that we have to retract for the lifestyle mode. So that means you have two joysticks installed yes. and uh, you navigate with these joysticks, so to speak, through the environment, yes. right? 90% of the commands can be uh, executed through the two joysticks. It's a really precise uh, uh, command. But at the same time, we even have a doubling of some functions uh, for security like the pedals. And we talked about the exterior. We, we emphasized a little bit on on the wheel and we said that this was inspired, the design was inspired by aerospace industry. Has it been also inspired by the aerospace industry? You have pedals, you have joysticks, you have an iconic wheel. It does. You see it on the, the streamline outside with the, with the dome inside, which automatically has this cockpit feel. And uh, obviously the joystick gives this feeling of aeronautically inspired, which is extremely emotional. But, but look, beside all this great technology, I detected a very new kind of fabric. Can you explain it? Is it wool or what kind yes. of fabric is this? Well, it's actually, it's, it's actually a tartan wool fabric, which, is, um, which we love because it contrasts the really soft shapes of Oka. It con contradicts and complements mm -hmm. the, the shapes. But at the same time, it is, again, one of the sustainable materials we use. All the materials we use are absolutely sustainable. It belongs to the whole concept of being, of reducing the footprint of this vehicle. So look, are there any new technologies in regards of air conditioning or clean air? Yes, actually, it's a, it's a part of the concept of the vehicle as we have this dome um, housed into... Thank you, Patrick. Hey, Anthony, good to have you. So, what makes this car so special? Tell well, us. Uh, with the M110 Legend GT, we have decided to stretch the refinement uh, of um, the, this A110. And we have really something really new and really elegant. It is the most elegant A110 so far. When we look at it, the first thing you see is this new paint. This is a Mercury Silver. It's a really nice paint and we decided to work on all the details, logo and wheels with this finish in pal gold that makes a really nice contrast uh, with this paint. Uh, at the rear, something you will be able to see on the images is we have turned the, the taillight into translucent taillights and that makes the Legend GT um, apart from other A110s. If you go inside the car, the first thing you see is the backlit logo on the, on the door seal. And inside, you have a really uh, cozy and really nice interior uh, with the Sabelt Comfort seats uh, finished in warm amber leather. And this is a bespoke upholstery exclusive to this A110 Legend GT. You have inside the presence of aluminium and is complemented with glossy carbon element with a copper weave, which is a really nice detail you will see after into the cars. And as Legend GT is a grand tourer of the family, it comes equipped with a bespoke luggage set with the same finish, the same color as the seats. So now discerning buyers have a version of the A110 to match their individual style. Okay, so I think individuality, Anthony, is exactly the right keyword. Since uh, our Alpine customers are definitely looking for something 
that is out of the ordinary. And therefore, today we are also launching the Alpine Color Edition program, starting with Color Edition 2020. So the color editions uh, are a program that will run annually from now on. So each year we'll see a particular version of the A110 with a bespoke color offered only for a very limited um, time and we will definitely not use the color after that in our program after the limitation period. So Anthony, so my wife has told me that yellow will be this season's color, but how did you know? Hey, you know, Patrick, actually, that's my job. <laughs> I'm paid for. Okay. <laughs> no, no kidding. But this is a really nice color. And, and by the way, in the past, the, all the Alpine were not blue. And we can see there are some of them. Yeah. There are some classical cars there with really nice color, really warm colors. And so uh, for the 2020 uh, edition, we decided to recreate uh, this historic jaune tournesol. So uh, this is a really nice color, the sunflower yellow. And it was really popular in the 60s and the 70s. And maybe remember your, uh, the wallpaper on your living room, uh, Patrick? That was <laughs> it was in the kitchen, actually, but it, yeah. uh, it was quite close to this. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really nice one. Yeah. And for me, this sunflower yellow is, is a really perfectly set off by the A110S. Why? Because we can notice we have all the, the black logos, black wheels, and mm. we have now the black insert into um, the headlamps, and of course, we have the carbon fiber roof, uh, which is an option on our cars, and it will really reinforce this contrast. So, to me, the John Tornesol and the A110S make the perfect combination, and that's a really nice car. Perfect. Oh, Anthony, so what we have, we have two limited editions Legend GT, limited to 400 units, and uh, Color Edition 2020, just uh, available in 2020. So both cars will be ready for order, not earlier than June, and deliveries in summer. But if you want to make sure that one of those very rare objects will finally be in your driveway, there is something that you can do. You just have to use the Alpine app and you can place your reservation. And if you have not the app downloaded maybe right now, because reservation will open right now, and this is now the time to make your place your order. Reservation. Um, but maybe, maybe even this very high level of individuality is not high enough for you. Maybe you want to take it even a step further. So if you are looking to push the envelope even more, if you want, an A110 that is truly yours. And if you are looking for a car that is able to match the uniqueness of your own personality, well, then I think Anthony will have right now some very good news for you as we are kickstarting today the personalization program of Alpine, Atelier Alpine. Anthony? Indeed, Atelier Alpine is really a complement to the existing A110 offer. And with no less than 29 new colors that are all um, reedition of historic Alpine colors. So it was really playful for the designer, as you can see on the images. Each color is limited to 110 units worldwide. On top of that, we have these 29 colors, but we are also providing four new calipers colors and three wheels colors and of course all in all the customers will have thousands of possible combination to play with and this is just the beginning uh, because we will expand atelier alpine over time great job anthony thanks Thank very you. much ladies and gentlemen as you can see we are growing the a110 family three versions pure legend and a110s two new limited editions and on top of that personalization with Atelier Alpine. So we're definitely building strong foundations 
for the long-term success of Alpine, while at the same time we are always also out there to explore potential new territories for the Alpine brand. And talking about new territories, this is exactly what the A110 Sports Cross is about. So this design exercise has been inspired by the vast and rich history of Alpine in rallying. So with the higher and wider stands, it is definitely putting on and adding a new facet of sportiness to the Alpine A110. Ladies and gentlemen, the feedback we will receive from the press, but also of course from customers and fans to design exercises like the A110 Sports Cross will definitely help us to define and to build a great future for Alpine. So thanks very much for your attention. Thanks very much for joining us online. Download the app if you don't have it. I would be glad to see a lot of you soon in our showrooms and goodbye and take care. Thank you. We are on the 90th year of Pininfarina history. 
And we are celebrating a very important anniversary. Well, my, my grandfather, he was always a little bit unsatisfied. We want a continuous improvement. So the target of this car, that is to be the best Italian electric car ever, the best performance, the best design, the best aerodynamic. It's uh, the demonstration that we want to do always better and better and better. We are doing something absolutely in line with the Pininfarina strategy and vision and DNA. We are on the 90th year of Pininfarina history and we are celebrating a very important anniversary. Well, my, my grandfather, he was always a little bit unsatisfied. We want a continuous improvement, so the target of this car, that is to be the best Italian electric car ever, the best performance, the best design, the best aerodynamic. It's uh, the demonstration that we want to do always better and better and better. We are doing something absolutely in line with the Pininfarina strategy and vision and DNA. We are on the 90th year of Pininfarina history and we are celebrating a very important anniversary. Well, my, my grandfather, he was always a little bit unsatisfied. We want a continuous improvement, so the target of this car, that is to be the best Italian electric car ever, the best performance, the best design, the best aerodynamic. It's uh, the demonstration that we want to do always better and better and better.
are doing something absolutely in line with the Pininfarina strategy and vision and DNA. We are on the 90th year of Pininfarina history and we are celebrating a very important anniversary. Well, my, my grandfather, he was always a little bit unsatisfied. We want to continuous improvement. So the target of this car, that is to be the best Italian electric car ever, with the best performance, the best design, the best aerodynamic. It's uh, the demonstration that we want to do always better and better and better. We are doing something absolutely in line with the Pininfarina strategy and vision and DNA. We are on the 90th year of Pininfarina history and we are celebrating a very important anniversary. Well, my, my grandfather, he was always a little bit unsatisfied. We want to continuous improvement, so the target of this car, that is to be the best Italian electric car ever, the best performance, the best design, the best aerodynamic. It's uh, the demonstration that we want to do always better and better and better. We are doing something absolutely in line with the Pininfarina strategy and vision and DNA. We are on the 90th year of Pininfarina history and we are celebrating a very important anniversary. Well, my, my grandfather, he was always a little bit unsatisfied. We want to continuous improvement, so the target of this car, that is to be the best Italian electric car ever, with the best performance, the best design, the best aerodynamic. It's uh, the demonstration that we want to do always better and better and better.
are doing something absolutely in line with the Pininfarina strategy and vision and DNA. We are on the 90th year of Pininfarina history and we are celebrating a very important anniversary. Well, my, my grandfather, he was always a little bit unsatisfied. So he wanted continuous improvement. So the target of this car, that is to be the best Italian electric car ever, the best performance, the best design, the best aerodynamic. It's uh, the demonstration that we want to do always better and better and better. We are doing something absolutely in line with the Pininfarina strategy and vision and DNA. We are on the 90th year of Pininfarina history and we are celebrating a very important anniversary. Well, my, my grandfather, he was always a little bit unsatisfied. So he wanted continuous improvement. So the target of this car, that is to be the best Italian electric car ever, the best performance, the best design, the best aerodynamics. 